and we're back to learning JavaScript on FreeCodeCamp. This is Caesar Cipher, the third portfolio project. We've got a simple encryption method or cipher method. You can read all about that right here where there's a link. But in simple terms, we will be given characters and depending on the index of it in the alphabet, we will increment or decrement them by 13. So for example, A would have the index 0 in the regular alphabet. So we would increment that by 13 and then use the 13th letter of the regular alphabet, which would be N. And if we, for example, would have N, it would be decremented by 13 and we will get A. It's all uppercase and we should not transform non-alphabetic characters. So white spaces, question marks, exclamation, all of this stuff. So here's my solution. It's just one way to solve it, obviously. But I first created an answer. I want to store the string in it after we've ciphered it. And I have to declare this variable. Let me directly print it out. For now, the answer is empty. So we don't get anything. But by doing this, you can see in real time what I'm doing here with the code. Then I've created a simple alphabet. So A to Z. And it's all uppercase. Once again, it says it right here on the left hand side. So I now need A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth. Then I've used a for loop to get through every single character in my string, which is simply called str. A simple counter is needed, i equals 0, and it needs to be compared to our length, so the length of the str, the string. And I want to increment it for each iteration, so i++. Let me directly print it out, so if we have our str at position i, we will simply get all the letters one by one. So S, E, R, R, then there's white space, so this is also covered. We can use index of to find the specific position of these letters. And as a reference, we'll use our alphabet. So I simply copy paste our variable name. There's a typo, let me check that. And now we don't get the letters. Instead, we'll get the position of the letters in our alphabet variable. You can also see there's a minus one, and there's the white space. So the non-alphabetic characters. So if a character isn't found in our alphabet variable, we'll get undefined which would be by default a minus one as index. So it's not just white space, but also question marks and the exclamation mark. Let me comment it out for now. And I'm going to use this now to store it in my answer. But we'll have to be careful because we've got three cases. The first case, I'll just use it for the if statement. And the condition is if the number so our index number is bigger or equal to 13. So for example, the letter N and everything that comes after it. Or here the first letter in S, it has 18 and the letter R has 17. These are all the letters that will be covered by our first if condition. And if we have that, we want to subtract 13 from it. So N becomes A, for example. So what we need is to store it in our answer. I'll copy paste this line. And I have to use this as the index position in our alphabet variable.
but then I make it minus 13. So for now we've got SERR and so forth, but if I now make it minus 13, it will be already translated for the most part. You can see it, we've got the F now for the S and so forth. But this was only the first part, so S18 would be covered, but E has an index of 4, it's not covered. So this is where we need the second case. I use an else if for that. And again I paste the condition almost exactly. So we need our alphabet dot index of str at counter i, but this time it's smaller than 13. This would be, for example, the letter E, which would have an index of 4 in our alphabet variable. And if this is the case, we need to increment it. So plus 13, so that the E, for example, becomes the letter R. But be careful, we also have this undefined case. So the white space, for example. So we also need to add that condition in our else if. So if this is bigger than minus 1 or unequal to minus 1 would also be fine. That way we have excluded this from our second case. And as I said, we want to have plus 13. And now, for example, we have freed CoCamp already. So the E was translated into the letter R. So 4 is found as the index. Therefore, the condition is true. It's also bigger than minus 1. So we'll add 13 to its index. And this will give us the letter R in our alphabet. And this will be added to our answer. Now let's get to the final case, which is the undefined, so all of the white space, question marks, and the non-alphabetic characters. We'll just use else for that. We don't have to define a condition, as all other cases are covered by if and else if. And if this is the case, we simply want to return the character without translating it into a different one, so we can just use answer plus equals str at position counter i. And now we've got the white space included and everything works. And if I, for example, add something to our str, let me code this one out. Here's the free code camp, and if I add a question mark, it will simply be added as this is the last, the final case, the else. If I add A to it, it would be translated to N. And this is all uppercase, so if I, for example, add a lowercase A, it's not going to get covered. So we should have fulfilled all of the requirements for this portfolio project. Let me run it, and we're good. And this is how you can solve Caesar Cipher on FreeCodeCamp. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.